My name is Hemant Obroy and I am a chef. The thing I know best is cooking, so I try to spread joy through my food. I want not only the taste of food to capture imaginations, but also the sound, the look, the feel and the scent. That's what motivates me to experiment with the food. Now, people expectation from me has reached sky high. Most of the times, I don't disappoint. But there are times in my life where even my skills were tested to its limits. Those times when I was asked to cook for internationally traveled connoisseurs of food and styles, celebrities, who are used to the best and the finest. What could one cook for them has indeed been a challenge. That's when I had to dive into my innermost creativity and outdo even my best. It's in these circumstances that I have come out with some of my most celebrated dishes. So let me share my experiences and journeys into some of my most iconic dishes. The Iron Lady, she says, don't follow the crowd, let the crowd follow you. This reminds me of my philosophy, that you have to be a leader, you have to be a creator, and let the world follow you. You can't be me too. And I had a fortune of serving her the most beautiful cuisine when she visited India and interact with her. About 10 days before her arrival, we got the information uh, through the Ministry of External Affairs that uh, the Iron Lady will be visiting us. Then we started thinking about the whole procedure, what to make, what not to make. Way back, I think in um, early 2000, some of my uh, foreign friends had come and they wanted me to take them to Dobigad, which I had never been in Mumbai. Living in Mumbai, I had never been. So I took them to show Dobigad. That thing left a very good impression in my mind. So that gave me an idea. Why not create something with Dobigad? Irons, beautiful irons we are using. When we can steam the clothes and the steam comes out, why can't we steam the food and 
with the steam pressure, the food is cooked. And that's what the mindset was set on. And I started thinking about the whole process. Guys, I've got your iron today. I think what you should do is get some meat, thinly sliced. We'll make some marinades with uh, mustard, little yogurt, spices. And uh, let's make some of the combinations. And we can make vegetarians too. We tried out a lot of marinations, a lot of different things with chicken, lamb, vegetables, seafood, and created different things. Make it very thin so that it takes the marination, just to paste off the marination. And then I'll show you how to put in the butter paper. It is very tricky to, to first to try out a lot of marinations, then pick up the right one. Very thinly sliced. So the moment I'll apply the pressure, it will flatten out. So I have to literally hold, hold it, it in the, the hand pressure. in such a way it doesn't put too much of pressure on this. Don't let too much of pressure go onto this. Eat, otherwise, paneer will flatten out. See what I told you? Yeah. It has to be a very little pressure on this. We'll try one more on this. Yeah. Beautiful sound. And you can have a look at it. If you feel still a little bit, as, see it's almost done. You can take out the flake of the fish. Mm. The flavors come out beautifully. Since she was called a iron lady, and I was already thinking of this cuisine, so I thought, let me call it a iron cuisine only. After the meal was over, she came out and uh, she complimented the entire meal and thanked me and my team members for the entire experience what we had given her. And uh, she came out and in fact, uh, she told me to take out the cap and she signed my cap and her name written on that. Sometimes you wonder what's there in the pot. The plants you can see, roots you can't. And it's always the roots are hidden. I wonder, why can't we have the glass pots where the roots can be seen, the reality can be seen? My life has been all about innovations and inventions. And I wanted the people to see what the food looks like, how it is so well presented. That's why from khad cuisine to tandoors, to even the iron cuisine. Everything was brought to the table. And we brought even the fulka trolley to the table so that people can see how the fulkas can be made. Similarly, when President Bush was visiting us, I thought, let me serve the biryani in a glass jar so that people can see the layers of rice inside. And it's visible, yet fragrant, and how it could be achieved 
And once we finally achieved it, it was one of the best results. When President Bush was visiting us, we were told that he loves Chinese food when he went to China. He loved the Chinese food. That is the time we thought, let's give him at least the main course, which is very Indian Indian. Because he had never probably would have tasted a good biryani back home also. So that's why the whole concept of the biryani came. I've always been thinking in life how to be different and how visually we can make the food so interesting that people are eating with their eyes today. People do not understand what goes in making a biryani. They enjoy eating the biryani. They do not know the process. And I thought if I do, the same process in a glass bowl, at least they will realize how the heat travels, how the rice is cooked, how aroma of the saffron penetrates, and the mint or the coriander and the garam masala, how it remains within the biryani. And the bowl shape, it plays a very important role. So the heat travels and it comes back in cycles. So the flavors remain within the bowl. It doesn't go out. That's how when I thought of making a glass bowl, first we did a lot of experiments with ordinary glass bowl. Whenever we will put in the oven, they'll break. Whether we did it on top of the griddle, they will still break. So in fact, one of the times when Short Swizzle CEO came to India and he asked me, he says, uh, can I do something for you? And suddenly my mind went into this. I gave him a biryani jar, the ceramic one. I said, you have a huge and one of the largest glass making company in the world. Can you make this into a toughened glass, which can take 400 degrees heat also in the oven? He says, can you give me a sample bowl? I gave him the sample bowl. And once this bowl came to me, fantastic results. Absolutely amazing. Good morning, chef. Good morning, chef. Good morning, chef. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Finally, something is done. Let me show you what it is. Finally, it's made. This bowl is heat proof till about 450 degrees. It took us almost two months after I got the consignment of the bowls to keep on doing the trials. And once we were satisfied with the trials after two months or so, I said, now you can put the biryani bowls into circulation and let's start the biryani. Finally, it's made. Guys, this is like dream come true. This bowl is heat proof till about 450 degrees. Everybody can see the biryani. Everybody can see the meat, the rice, how it rises, how aroma will come out. So what you do is, uh, Neha, can you take the meat? Hmm? Start marinating them. Mm. 
So you know there are almost like 500 ways to make biryani in our country. Have you ever heard of Dindigul biryani? No, sir. Dindigul is a place in Karnataka where there is a small town. It's called the Talpakati. Talpakatis are the turban-wearing people. And they make the biryani and it's over by afternoon. Check the rice quality. Basmati long grain rice. Boil the rice, strain it out when it's two-thirds done. You have to be very careful in making a biryani that the rice is not overcooked. Otherwise, it tends to become a khichdi. While making the biryani, it's very important. First is the flavors of the quality of rice, the quality of meat, and how well you have cooked the meat, how the meat extract and the, uh, what the stock of the meat is reduced, and the same stock is being used to make the biryani. So that only imparts the flavor to the rice, and it, circles around, the aroma circle around in the bowl by itself. see the layers, you can see everything. What we are going to do is, we are going to keep it right on top of this and let it be on dump for at least about 25 to 30 minutes. Yeah, after 30 minutes, you will see the aromas rising. It will be within the biryani. The rice will uh, get all the flavors and then enjoy. For uniform cooking, use Bajaj microwave oven. I was pretty sure what I wanted to serve the president. That's why when we did the menu trials also, we tried the entire menu twice, thrice. And uh, the plate presentation, how it will go, how hard the food can go. So it's very important that hot food has to be served at a very, very good temperature. When he was at the table and I could watch him, and he was eating directly with a spoon from the bowl. And that was, uh, I think, one of the moments where what you enjoy the most when you see people digging into the biryani bowl and eating directly from there. And in fact, he was very complimentary about the meal. And he walked towards us when we were standing, say thank you, chef. Thank you for a lovely meal.